Hey, what's up? It's Matt, and I am here in Puerto Rico at night. And you may be wondering, well, gee, Matt, why are you showing us this beautiful place at night? But maybe the most beautiful thing is the night. The night sky. There's so much we don't know about this infinite landscape. What, or who, is out there? Or are we alone in this world? Tim Urban from Wait But Why does an awesome job of breaking this all down. The night sky we see is only a fraction of the galaxy in which we live. And you can explore all of our galaxy with a fun link I've put in the description. Now, for every star in our galaxy, between 100 and 400 billion, there is an equal number of galaxies that exist in space. Meaning there are between 10 sextillion and 1 septillion stars out there. Now, even taking the lowest scientific estimates, we believe that 1% of all these stars have an Earth-like planet orbiting around them. That still leaves us with 100 billion billion Earth-like planets. And then if we assume that only 1% of these Earth-like planets develop life, and that only 1% of that life is intelligent, that still leaves us with 10 quadrillion Earths with intelligent life, 100,000 of which should be in our galaxy. So it's clear that there almost definitely is life outside of Earth, right? Well, then why haven't we heard from any of it yet? Why hasn't SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, found any evidence of this in its over 30 years of existence? This is the Fermi Paradox, that there is such a high mathematical probability of there being life besides us, yet we've never had any proof of it. Okay, so do we have any ideas as to why we've never been contacted? Well, we do, and this is the fun part, because now we're getting hypothetical. The first group of explanations believes in something called the Great Filter. The Great Filter is an evolutionary barrier, somewhere between pre-life and super-advanced intelligence, that the vast majority of life just doesn't pass. So when on the evolutionary timescale is this filter? Well, some believe that we may have already passed it, that the most improbable thing in this universe is the formation of life itself. If we find any other form of life, then this can probably be ruled out, but what if we are the one exception, and we are all alone out here? That's kind of scary to think about. But maybe even scarier is the idea that the Great Filter is ahead of us. That life regularly evolves to our level, but before we can become advanced and intelligent enough to travel across universes, it collapses. This would explain the paradox, but it also means that we as a species are doomed to a set date. In fact, some academics believe that finding life on Mars or elsewhere is terrible news, because that means that life regularly can evolve to our point, but somewhere after, collapses. But let's put aside the doom and gloom for a second, because the other camp trying to explain the Fermi Paradox believes that the Great Filter is BS, that life typically can evolve to the point where it would cross universes. And here are some explanations they offer as to why we haven't been contacted yet. Other life did visit Earth, but before we developed intelligence, so they concluded there was nothing worthwhile there. We don't understand or have the advanced technology we need to communicate with other, more developed civilizations. I think that makes a lot of sense. Smarter civilizations understand that there are predator civilizations out there, and don't want to be broadcasting their location publicly like we do. One civilization has already become super advanced and will extinguish any other when they develop technology that could potentially threaten the leading civilization. This last explanation is offered by Neil deGrasse Tyson and it is my personal favorite. Imagine you see an earthworm. That earthworm has no idea how much smarter than it you are. And you wouldn't try to communicate with it because you know it wouldn't be able to understand you. So what if we are the earthworms and the other life out there is humans? if they don't try to communicate with us because they just know we wouldn't understand. Now that was a ton of speculation, but it's really the best we have. Future generations will probably look at our explanations the same way we looked at those who thought lightning was caused by Zeus being angry. So is there other life out there? Maybe. We have to wait for science and technology and see if we're contacted. But for now, maybe the best thing we can do is to just enjoy now. Boom, and I'm out of the ocean. All right, um, but thanks for watching this video. Check out that piece by Tim Urban on waitbutwhy.com. Basically, this video was an homage to that written work he did on that site. So go read it, subscribe for more if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, the normal stuff, and I'll see you later. Thanks.